degrees of 32 lines on the planet Earth. He is sad times indeed, eh? Scrambling for scraps in Venezuela. Things are really getting bad there. It's not just there, it's other spots in the world. Many of our brothers and sisters are struggling right now, while others have it really good and don't even know this sadly. The Bible speaks of these days in Matthew 24, if you're looking at what's going on right now. Several parts of the Bible are in play as we speak. Here is Damascus and Rebel, as prophesied over 3,500 years ago, being rebel and ruined just before Jesus returned. It's coming real soon. I'm not guessing like many others. I know for a fact. There's no guessing in my game. There's no game. It's the real deal. How uh, can I be sure? Well, Jesus healed me last year, March 12, 2018, at 1.38 in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. I was on the computer at the site I read for. And my life hasn't been the same. You know, every day I'm changing for the better. I spoke a lot about a lot of things, I wrote about a lot of things, and I see others talking about it right now. There's not much good time left. And by good usable time, you know, think about the third temple is about to go up. And not long after, he's going to claim to be uh, God, okay, and Jesus. Now think about it. How can you buy and sell after without the mark? Now's the time to stock up on your goods and supplies while you can get them. A little bit of time, how we can do it. You got a little bit of time to get some there. To try and ride it out for as best you can. But it's just more than that coming that we need to worry about. You know, this year's gonna have you ever seen the book of Eli? It's a good movie to watch for this many of you. In the aftermath, things you that you throw away right now with the nothing to you, the invaluable treasure. Because imagine if an EMP comes, right? You don't have to worry about that little the rocks in Revelation 12, we already know that. Lots of people have been getting visions about that already. But what are you going to do? Nothing works. All your convenience is gone. You can't drive around the corner to go get a burger or whatever. That, nothing's working. You can't go to the ATM for money or swipe through the card. Nothing's working. No power. That means no running water. No nothing. Think of it as a permanent camping trip for a while. Without ever coming back to the city. Forget about lights, forget about refrigeration, running water. You have to live off the land like the pioneers did. Can you do it? That thousand year reign for uh, Jesus has, that's not going to be easy taking you through money. Now, those in the in the spirit body, not going to have a problem at all. Right? We can go and eat off the trees of life, no problem. But it's the others who can't, that defend off the land. It tells us in Zechariah 14, it was 16 down. You don't go for that piece of tabernacle, God's most important festival of all. No rain first year. You don't go second year, it puts a plague on you and you die. That's serious, it's no joke, right? And many are taking it lightly. They're not taking it seriously. They're enjoying the worldly lifestyle. Not caring about their brothers and sisters around the planet who are suffering right now. Many don't even take a moment to even pray for them. The Bible instructs us to pray for our brothers and sisters in need everywhere. To try and help them if we can. They sent the aid to those in Jerusalem when they were having problems with getting food. I don't know if you recall, it's written in the Bible. They gave it to them as Saul back then before they called him Paul. There's so much going on in the Bible writes about it's happening all around us. The only choice you have right now is to, honestly, you only have one simple choice. To stand tall for Jesus and be counted among the hot and bold, right? In his books. Or to kneel for Satan. Because so many are just going through the motions right now. It's not getting them anywhere. For the lukewarm, you know, basically the, those in the milk of the word are unskilled in righteousness. Many don't know the words, but they don't have the passion in the heart to love Jesus in heart. Modern day Pharisees. They still fall into the same boat. The Pharisees knew every word, and they got many hating on each other for nitpicking over a misannunciation of a word or things like that, over the little things. It's like the Pharisees did, and Jesus was standing right in front of them and missed the big picture. This stuff is real, and it's going on all over the planet. I've been traveling this planet very soon for Jesus, right? And yeah, he wanted me to understand a few things that I really do right now, and I really 
in the home. I'm understanding a lot of things you're talking about now. You know, and so many of you are going to be living like they're living right now very soon. And you're living in a lap of luxury and all your luxury is going to be taken away and what are you going to do? We still be standing there and proclaiming Jesus or even cursing them? That is the question. Their brothers and sisters out there suffering are still glorifying Jesus' name, even when they're scrambling through the trash, looking for scraps of food to eat. What are you going to do if that time comes for you? Think about it, the current times are coming. He has said, they're going to persecute you for my name's sake. Yeah. And if you're not getting persecuted, well, then you're definitely doing something wrong. Bye-bye.